So last night I was walking up about 1.30 at night with the uh, heavy rain that we got and water was just pouring in this windowsill here and it came down and flooded out the basement. So I pulled up all the matting and the carpet so all this paneling will have to come off. But I bought a bunch of these uh, discant packs from Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece that uh, work real well at uh, sucking up all the moisture. I have this uh, wet dry vac from Home Depot called the Buckethead. And I also have this squeegee attachment, which works great. So this is what I'll be doing for the next couple of days rather than going into work. Luckily I have uh, about 50 hours of comp time to use up. What really kind of ticks me off is when I bought this house last year, it was never disclosed that this basement had flooded out before, but you see these carpet tacks that go around the edge are all rotted out from water. And so this place had flooded out before and this was never disclosed on the seller's disclosure that I know of. The water went underneath this drywall into another room, so I'm gonna have to knock this out. Well, I plan to redo this entire basement anyway, because this is 1970s decor, which I don't really like. Here's a big ass hole here by the window. This was never even attached to the foundation. There was no sealant in between here and the foundation, so all the water just deluged right in there and I had a couple gallons per minute flowing in there. I had one of these acrylic window well covers on here and it still flooded out. So, and this is the pile of dirt that took me an hour and a half to dig a hole up to my waist to get this clamshell out. So I've got the window pried out and all it is kept in here with is some <laughs> sticky foam stuff. They didn't, they didn't even seal this. There's absolutely no sealant along here. No silicone, nothing. And there's pro a big gap here that uh, beetles and toads can crawl into and die. And the water was just coming in underneath the window and coming over and dumping down onto the floor when this area out here filled up. Well, now it's raining once again for the second day in a row. Don't know how much rain we're supposed to get. But I had to cover up this uh, giant hole here. I took my drill and wire wheel and went over this and got off as much uh, corrosion and rust as I can and then painted some navel jelly on here. Let that sit for about 10 minutes and wiped it off and then sprayed it with some uh, rust neutralizer and then let that sit for 24 hours and sprayed it with some primer and let that sit for a couple hours then sprayed it with this black rust-oleum rust uh, preventative spray paint. You can see this huge gap in between here that they just filled up with uh, some kind of rubber spray. So what I'm going to do is I cut some uh, shims, half inch shims from some pine and I'm gonna stick this up underneath here. That way there's an equal distance between the top and the bottom and I can uh, and I could shoot sealant down in here where it was leaking. So I got the window mounted back in there. I drilled holes and put some cement anchor screws all the way in here so they ain't going anywhere. Then I shot some low expansion great stuff down in here and then this morning took a uh, utility knife and cut the excess off. It's still kind of messy, but once I paint this with the exterior paint, these, this foam will be covered up and injected some clear silicone in here and letting that dry. So hopefully this whole window will not leak again. What I'm attempting to do is make a hot box with some uh, Super 77 spray and some uh, aluminum foil and hopefully be able to heat the conduit up hot enough to bend it. But I've never tried this hot box method of bending PVC pipe before, so I don't know if it'll work or not, because it may just catch this box on fire. And
So I've got a hole saw that's a little bit bigger than the, uh, the nozzle on this heat gun. Then I've got another hole saw that is just a little bit bigger than this uh, half inch pipe. Tucking tin foil around here so that the exposed cardboard is less likely to heat up. Do the same on the top. Tuck some tin foil in there. So the idea behind this is to heat this pipe up enough to make it bendable. And what I'm hoping is this uh, tin foil will hold the heat in there and prevent my cardboard box from catching fire. So I bought a bag of clay sand to fill up the in, fill the inside of the tube up. One end I have duct taped up, and I'll dump this sand inside the pipe to uh, keep the inside of the pipe from creasing. I've got this uh, tube completely filled with sand. Both ends are taped up. So this is the first time I've ever tried bending PVC this this way. So I guess uh, we'll see whether the sand will allow it to, to absorb enough heat or maybe the sand will take too much heat away and not allow it to bend. First time doing this, so you guys get to see this in as I get to see it. Kind of a, an experiment on the fly. Now I'm rotating the pipe slowly just so one side doesn't get blasted by the hot air. We'll run this for about a minute and see how things go. I'll start smelling something getting warm. That's about a minute. And let's see here. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Look at that. Nice and bendable. So what I'm trying to do is make a PVC cover for this and heat it up and then bend it around this uh, window well. So yeah, that just might work. Guess we'll keep heating it up and uh, it only took a minute to heat that pipe and the sand up. So hopefully this will work. I'm heating up a little more, about a two foot length here, just to bend around that corner. I'm seeing smoke coming out of this thing now. So, uh, I will keep a little bit on the back side here and put some bricks on here. So you can uh, let that cool. As far as the hot box, the 
Super 77 glue kind of failed at the high temperature, so I might have to find some kind of fireplace glue or some high temperature glue that will hold it together because this stuff fell right off. But so far, I mean, it took like uh, 30 seconds to get this pipe uh, pliable. In a minute, it was completely flexible and it's still warm. So just forming this PVC pipe to make a cover for this window well because this is kind of an odd shaped window that's really low to the ground and doesn't really give me enough room to put a acrylic shell over it without it uh, sticking about a half inch away from the wall. And that's why all the beetles and toads were down in there because it never got a good seal up against the wall. So I elevated the box a little bit so I could spin this around. It only needs about another, to this mark right here, and I set my heat gun to low. It has a high and a low, and I've only ha had it on low, so you don't need it set to high. 30 to 60 seconds later, this pipe is going to be hot enough to bend. That might be a little too much for this one, but... There we go. So this is what I'm trying to do with this, is make a frame to cover this window well, and then I'll cover it with this uh, corrugated polycarbonate plastic so that the rain runs off. So here's the finished product. It's all glued together with the uh, PVC glue. I put bricks on it to flatten it out while the glue sets. Mounted this by drilling holes into the cement wall back here, then using conduit clamps and uh, cement anchor bolts. So for about $5 in PVC piping and fittings and about $20 in uh, clear roofing material, something this size Deep or Lowe's would have cost me about $160 for a window well cover.